Hey guys, Darren back again. We've picked up another AES console off eBay. Uh, this one cost me about 110 US ships to the door here in Australia. And this one came from Bahrain of all places. So that was a bit random, but uh, good price. It is faulty. It's got a power fault. So let's pull it apart and see if we can fix it. Okay, so I've gone ahead already and unscrewed the whole thing. And I've even uh, lifted the board out and taken a good look around. And the fault is pretty obvious. So this one is missing all the power circuitry down here on the board. So I'll give you a zoom in on that. So this is a very, very early revision. Uh, in fact, I'll give you the serial number. It is 003228. So that's extremely early. Um, and these ones had the power filtering uh, sort of amplification circuit on the board. Um, it just consists of a, a big power transistor, like a Darlington transistor, two smaller ones, uh, and some resistors. So they're completely missing. So I know for a fact this is not going to work and uh this is our problem so we'll go through the steps on getting the parts soldering it all back in and testing it out these parts are actually printed here on the board so you know we've got uh 47 ohms at half watt resistor we've got a 470 ohm resistor probably at a quarter watt and two 1k resistors probably a quarter watt so they're they're basic uh the two transistors here uh q3 and q4 we don't know what they are and the same with Q2, that big tr power transistor. We don't know what that is. I've got an older, a different revision. And this one's got the daughter board on it, like this daughter power board, uh, Neo power board. And it also runs off five volts. So we can just go ahead and examine these components and basically order equivalents. So I've gone ahead and done that. Um, I'll post up a link to all these components in the description so you can take a look just to note you know when it was a half watt it's just physically a bit larger it can dissipate a bit more heat and the little quarter watts are a bit smaller so luckily i had this board so that's going to get me out of trouble um, i've ordered the parts i'm going to wait for them to arrive and then we'll fit them up but right now let's take another quick look at the board see what's actually going on um, and if there's any damage or anything we can repair while we're here. Quick overview of the board. Um, this is a very early revision, so it actually just says Neo AES. We don't get the dash, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six sort of revisions as we see on other boards. Um, this is the earliest one I've ever seen. And uh, the layout is completely different. So the BIOS chip, for example, is up here on the top of the board, which is quite weird I've never seen it up there usually it's down uh, here in this area right here next to the cartridge slot these three big SNK chips they're in completely different spots well that one's sort of similar but these two don't exist on the later revisions this is normally where um, the Yamaha audio chip is and everything's just really jumbled about so you get used to working on these boards and then you come across an early one like this, which is quite unusual. Um, just as I'm talking, I've noticed a few more things that are out of place on this board. So if I zoom into this area here, which is the video encoder, uh, you'll see at the top there it says uh, CXA1145P. That's a very common Sony uh, chip. You find that in the uh, Sega Master System and so forth. Two things that are obvious here, which you've probably already spotted, is this capacitor shouldn't be here. So someone has put a capacitor across that resistor down there to maybe attempt to smooth out or filter out the video. Um, we're going to have to look at that, but I'm going to take that off because it doesn't really need to be there. 22 microfarad they've put on. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's that's not really required. Uh, and there's also this bridge here. So someone's run uh, a link off that pin to 
the top here and, and that's just going to be ground and that pin I think um, from memory I'll, I'll put up a, a graphic now on the screen yeah so that pin is the video selection between PAL and NTSC and when you ground that pin which I think has been done it forces it into the PAL uh, color burst spectrum uh, 4.33 megahertz I'm going to take that off as well and try and restore that pin uh, either back down to the board or just to a 5 volt feed to restore it back to NTSC even though I'm here in Australia and we use PAL TVs you know modern TVs accept all formats um, that sort of 50 60 hertz thing from the past and PAL NTSC it's all it's all sort of gone now we don't worry about that anymore TVs can accept anything and I prefer to run everything at NTSC 60 hertz anyway so I'll restore that to factory. I'll take that cap off. I may not show you the full steps, but I'm going to plan on doing that. And something else for another video, just while I'm here rambling away, is you'll notice that there's these capacitors and these resistors come off the video encoder pretty much straight out and into the, uh, the video output port here. So what's interesting is they're 100 microfarad, as they say on the board there, and the resistors are 68 ohm, as it says on the board, and that's actually not right. So I know SNK made the boards this way, but the official data specification, the data sheet for the Sony CXA 1145 is actually uh, 470 microfarads and 75 ohm coupling output. So a really common RGB and even composite video upgrade is to remove these caps remove these resistors and put in the correct values and that gives you a nice bright RGB or composite signal so you know restoring things to their uh, factory specs uh, is a good move so I know as these boards changed in revisions that they actually did get that correct in later models I think the 3-6 is correct um, I can't remember actually off the top of my head but if we even go back to this one over here my board that's also got um, the old incorrect values so overall this console is not bad uh, there's some things we need to fix up that's an upgrade probably for another day but you know what let's get on with it let's power this thing up uh, it's very important with these early revisions you only feed it um, 5 volts a nice regulated 5 volts so 5 volts DC um, this one can supply up to 3000 milliamps 3 amps so that's absolutely perfect for this board. Uh, most of the later revisions use 10 volts or 9 to 10 volts and they have um, regulators on board to drop that down to 5 and steady it out. But okay, so just juggled you around a little bit there so you can see what's going on. So that's our power connector. That's the rear. And uh, this is the front of the board. So where our components are missing are down here. So we can see, even though the legs are still there on these components, they've just been cut off. And this one's the main power feed junction. You can tell that by how large these traces are. 5.13. Okay, so that's our five volt feed coming in. So that's our positive pin. And that's our ground point there. So, okay, so if we look at the incoming traces, there's a component there that that bridges it and there's a component uh, there that bridges they're on the, under, on the underside um, basically they're going to send the power up here to the switch uh, and the switch is right there with these two pins so in a nutshell it's pretty basic the 5 volts will travel up here they'll come into these two pins here on the switch as you close the switch that becomes joined and the 5 volts will jump from this pin and let's actually measure it so we've got five volts there that'll be zero now if i flick the switch across that'll become five and then we can continue and trace where the five volts go so it goes into this whole pad here goes through these two points i think that's that half watt resistor yeah it is and these three points are our main um, transistor junction so that one there is five that's going to be zero that's going to be zero so 
It's like a little switch, these transistors and this resistor bank. It's, it's basically going to run through all this little grid here of the resistors and transistors. It's going to come back out. Uh, this main power transistor will get biased uh, in such a way that it'll allow the current to flow and the, and the voltage to come across. And then this center pin here will become 5 volts, and that's our clean 5 volt rail, which comes down here, comes along here, and into the big cap. Those two points there will definitely be the main board capacitor, which is that one, uh, 1000 microfarad. We, we'll probably even swap that out while we're doing all this. Um, and then that's it. From that point right there, that's the, the sort of clean, regulated, uh, de-rippled 5 volt supply coming into the board. But as you can see, we've got a fundamental break in just the, the, the feed into the board to begin with. Um, I don't know if this is going to work once we fix the power issue, but we can only try. Um, we could really, in theory, just run our power in. We could bridge the collector and the, the emitter and the collector together. We could, down here, the EC, we could bridge them together on the underside and potentially power the board. Um, but I probably won't do that, even though I, even though I consider this five volt power supply to be very good it's probably better to run it through the circuitry it was designed to run through uh, and that'll just uh, you know refine that voltage a little bit further maybe do some current limiting maybe do a few things like that so but as a quick dirty test yeah you could just bridge those two points there the left one and the middle one and that would work the board would fire up you want me to try it don't you Oh god. Well, we might do it for a split second, but we're not going to um I hope it doesn't break my game. No, it should be fine. Should be fine. All right. So, pressure's on. Um we got to wait for components, so we may as well do something interesting. Let's plug it in. 5 volts. It won't hurt it actually. I just wouldn't run it for a sustained period of time, but it it'll be fine. Um how am I going to do this physically? Leave it off for a second, put my game in. This is a hundred dollar game, or probably more actually, NAM 1975. So if this breaks, it's your fault. No, it's not gonna break. Um, we'll turn it upside down. We'll let it balance about there. I'll go ahead and desolder all these points and get them all cleaned up and ready for our new components uh, in a day or two. And then while we're at it, we'll just bridge that together and then we can um, we can quickly power it up, test it, and make sure it all works by bypassing all this circuitry. So stay tuned. Probably don't try this at home, but just for the sake of entertainment, here we go. Uh, let's just take it from here, and there you go. So it's firing up nicely. Actually, you know what? Some of the video is missing, so we might have some more issues going on i'm going to disconnect that okay so it's uh it's actually about two and a half weeks later and uh you know the parts finally arrived um these are direct replacement nec a1442 power transistors um so that's uh that's fitted and the other little guys i found direct replacements for as well um and as well as the other components so they're all in um and it does seem to work but there's more problems so let me just show you what happens um if i um i'll power it up with no game inserted and it comes up but you know it does its normal self test and we get a solid yellow screen uh so a yellow screen typically suggests the pallet ram uh, down here is faulty so you know the next stage is to probably swap out uh these two chips so, you know, it's like a never-ending um, treasure hunt trying to find the problem on these boards sometimes. So, we'll go ahead and do that. I'll just quickly power that off, put the game in, and show you what it does with the game. So, it does sort of work now, which is good. So, our power is sorted, which is great. But, we're getting some graphical problems So I'll just skip this forward. So there's no background graphics. 
but the text is there yeah so here's the game and some of the text is here it's actually a bit jittery you can see all this sort of jitter going on and the the main game graphics aren't there like the sprites all aren't there so yeah we've got problems so step one you know power is now restored uh which was it was actually very difficult to track down some of these parts especially the big darlington transistor so i've got those now i actually went overboard and bought a lot of them because they were really cheap from the seller i found so i've got plenty of those i'll post a link in the description of where you can pick them up um, as well as the other little transistors so that's all easy to get now that i know where to look um, i also went ahead and bought um, you know the common replacement chips for these things uh, the pallet ram um, and just you know the, the chips that fail so today we're going to look at the cx k5814 p-35 l that's the pallet ram those two chips um, and i i got exact replacements for those so we'll do that um, i'll put them on sockets and we'll test again so i'll just do one at a time and see if it actually makes a difference right so they're all desoldered now and what i do next which you've seen me do on other videos is just grab a plastic tool and just walk through each pin and make sure it's actually disconnected and you kind of hear it click like that um, it kind of breaks the remaining solder if anything's actually attached because the last thing you want to do is try and pull these chips out when there's a bit of solder attached because it'll take a trace with it the only thing i'll show you quickly is with the sockets they're actually too long so um we're two pins too long so all you do in that situation is you know try and keep the notch intact because that's um you know it's just a nice indicator and we just need to snip off two pins so when you snip them you don't want to cut into the um into that third pin you want to leave that plastic in place so you kind of cut right through that second pin and that'll just get destroyed and cut right off so um otherwise you know the, otherwise the pin you want will fall out and you don't want that to happen so i cut it about there that'll just snap right off that pin will come out and as you can see we're left with uh, like a jagged edge but uh, the plastic wall is still intact which is exactly what you need cut that off pull that pin out and just then tidy up the edges the sockets should just drop in yep take note of the orientation you know the chip notch goes to the socket notch and that will go in so let's do the second one so they're, they're in they're sitting pretty well they're not you know completely perfect and straight but they're good enough they're making nice electrical connections so i'm going to plug it in and i'm going to give it av no game at this stage we'll just let the the built-in uh, diagnostic colored screens tell us what's happening. There we go, we've got a solid blue screen. So, solid blue means it's working, It's everything's perfect. So I'm actually just gonna get straight on with that. Put the game in, fire it up again. I'll let you have a look. And let's see if we get the background sprites. We've still got a little bit of jitter in the colors and the font so there you go now we've got background so we're gonna have to look at capacitors i would say next to look at all that uh, jitter i'd say there's some ac ripple in the in the voltage lines um or well, something's going on that's not quite right yeah that all that shimmer it's not not the end of the world but yeah we need to probably fix that Okay, so we're almost there. We've, um, okay. So power that off just so you can hear what I'm saying. So we've restored power. We've re repaired the pallet RAM. I don't know which chip that was. Uh, it's not really, you know, in my opinion, it's not really worth stuffing about too much. You just kind of get in there and pull them out, replace them. Um, if it was, you know, if, if I wasn't under the pressure of making the video and I was just going to do this myself, I would just do one at a time. And you guys should probably just do one at a time, pull it out, test it, continue. Um, but, you know, I had the gun heated up. 
I've got plenty of spare parts. You know, I'll just rip these out, put new ones in, and job's done. Um, I kind of prefer to do that. And I kind of prefer to take, you know, to see the nice clean board with nothing attached. And I've taken high res photos of that area. So, you know, next time I can see where all the traces run and everything without actually removing the sockets. Okay, so I've just been having a look at the caps on the video output, which I think are responsible um, for the jitter. Uh, it may be another cap or two, but let's try them, these ones first because um, they need to be replaced anyway. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, I've already replaced the main power cap uh, here, you know, with a reasonable brand, Jackson, um, 1000 microfarad, 25 volt. So that's good. I know that's fine. The power's all fine. So I've just been tracing out these caps. They're the values what they do um you know we're, we're basically dealing with all the pinouts on the back of the connector up here we're going to do that we're going to follow what sony recommends um 470 microfarad to replace the 100 and 75 ohm to replace the 68. so i've just gone through and traced them out um i've just used my little four color pen and We've got the audio capacitor here on the left, um, 10 microfarad, and that's actually correct. So we don't really need to change that, although I might put a, a brand new 10 microfarad in. Uh, then we've got the red capacitor, so we'll change that. That comes off the second pin up here on the chip. Uh, then it's actually blue, um, comes off uh, almost next door. Uh, green, uh, I've got a big C on that one for C-Sync and a big dirty black mark on that one for composite video because composite's just dirty. So that's our caps. Um, you can see exactly which ones they correspond to on the board. It's, you know, they're directly connected. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna just swap them out and we'll test again and see if that makes a difference to our video quality. If it doesn't, we'll come back and we'll play with something else. Um, I've just taken out the composite video one on the far right first because we're testing with composite video cable. So we'll get an instantaneous result and we'll know if we're on the right track. Uh, so that was just the 100 microfarad 10 volt and we're gonna replace it with a 470 microfarad 10 volt. Um, this one's a Jackson, um, it's an okay brand. So just go for a you know reasonably okay brands, don't go for the cheapest out there. This is high quality video output so probably try and put a better quality cap in than just rather than a cheap one from China. Okay, so it's the next day and I've actually um, been fiddling around with the board quite a lot. So last night I went through and swapped out some more caps. I did, you know, composite, composite sync. Uh, I did this cap right here. Um, I upgraded the main filter cap to 2200 microfarad because on the light, later revisions, they're 2200. Uh, I thought it might be a DC rippling problem. Uh, that really made no difference. So you know, that could be a thousand or it doesn't really matter. Um, I swapped out a couple more little caps, uh, just that one down there. Um, nothing really actually made much of a difference. So I've been sort of racking my brains why the composite video looks so bad and has dot crawl all through it. And then it sort of dawned on me that this is an original revision. This is revision one. These things just have poor composite video. Um, they also have poor RGB out of the out of the box, uh, and that's why I'm going to upgrade these components. So I'm going to test it on RGB in a second. Um, but just to go through what I've done, I just thought I'd give you this little rundown. What I did also do, which which actually did make a big difference, actually, is um, this little pot here. That's actually a variable capacitor, um, zero to fifty picofarads by just using a small little flat blade screwdriver and uh, even just putting it in there and, and varying the amount of capacitance just by touching it made a significant difference on the screen. So I actually went through with the game running and just tweaked it and just manipulated that quite a bit, just kept fiddling around with it left and right. And I got, I got a quite a good result. So I'm not gonna touch it anymore, but if, you're, if you wanna adjust your uh, composite video, that, that variable um, capacitor. Just adjust that and see what looks better for you. Um, there's no real correct answer to that, just whatever looks best for you. So I've improved it a lot uh, by doing that and I'll show you the results of that. 
But then we still need to really focus on the RGB because that's really where the quality is. You can see it there in the NAM, in the black part, and in the text. You can see it sort of jittering around a little bit. But it is better than what it was. So, you know, it's one of those it's one of those things, you know, you want to sort of improve it, but I think there's a limit to what I can actually do with this early revision board. So I'm going to switch my attention now to RGB, <clears throat> which is what everyone, you know, you should be using that anyway. So I'm going to swap out the, uh, the green, the blue, and the red cap there. Also the matching resistors. Uh, and I'll put a new audio cap in as well. And that way this whole region has been upgraded and it should work quite nicely. I might actually just plug it in with an RGB cable to my CRT now and just just do a before and after um, so we can see the difference of what the, the values do. Okay, so this is before the RGB component mods. It's pretty dark. It's not bad, but it could be better. So we're going to upgrade those components and see what difference that makes. I thought I'd just quickly test some of these caps um, just to see what the value actually is, um, just for interest. So, you know, if you want to skip ahead, that's cool, but. I've got myself a little um, basic little component tester here. You, you just pick these up off eBay or Amazon for, you know, like under ten dollars. Um, that's the model of mine there. It's GM three two eight A version one point one. I don't even know what that means, but let's have a look. Let's plug it in. Just a nine volt power supply. Uh, you can put your capacitor in any position. Like this thing will detect any pin combination, which is pretty cool. Just push the button and it'll fire up and do its test. Testing capacitance, let's have a look. Yeah, okay, wow, there you go. So this should be 100 microfarad and it's coming up at 29.09 microfarad, you know, between, between pins one and two. That's the symbol of capacitance. 14% uh, voltage loss. And the equivalent series resistance, ESR, 31 ohms. So that's terrible. So this one's finished. So no wonder it looks terrible. So 470, you know, hopefully it's going to be right up there pretty close within 10%. Let's have a look. Five, 501. So it's actually a bit high. That's interesting. ESR zero, which is great. Let's just... Let's put a the big banger in. Let's put a the thousand microfarad in I had on the voltage rail. Um, let's see if we can get a read on that. That's a new one as well. So let's see what that is. Nine thirty six out of a thousand. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad. Low ESR. One of the most important things you ever look for with capacitors is the ESR. So you want that to be as low as possible. Equivalent series resistance. All right. Well, that'll do for that, guys. Uh, let's get back onto the RGB stuff. Okay, so they're all taken out. Um, I've got the uh, the three RGB caps out. I've got the audio cap out, and I've got the relevant three resistors out. That resistor can stay. It's not uh, relevant to what we're doing right now. So I'll go ahead and put those back in. And there you go. So we've got our caps all in, we've got our resistors in. Let's go test it. And this is with the new components in place, the new caps, the new resistors. Let's give it a go and see what the difference is. Okay, well that looks brighter already. Let's just wait for that to boot up. Summer, 1975. Yeah, that looks brighter. Coming a bit. I'm being recalled to Nautorn headquarters. Do I have to go back to the hell again? It's hard to film a CRT. You sometimes get uh, vertical rolling lines like this, but on the actual TV, it, it looks perfect. Yeah, that's quite a nice picture.
Right, so back over on the bench, and that's pretty much the end of it, guys. I think we've done a pretty good job today. We've probably taken this board as far as I can go. Um, so just to recap, you know, we had the C1815 uh, transistors down here in the power board. The little ones, they got replaced. A couple of resistors. Uh, the NECA1442 uh, larger transistor. That one's hard to find because... The pin configuration is, um, you know, emit a collector base in that sort of order. And normally the base pin is in the center. So it's actually quite unusual and the, the gain properties are quite unusual. So I had to really track those down, but I've, I've got those. Um, the, the big main filtering power cap, to be honest, you can go anywhere from 1,000 right up to 2,200. It doesn't really matter. It just takes the ripple, if any, out of the incoming 5 volt supply. Later revisions are 2200 microfarads, so I'd probably recommend a larger one rather than a smaller one. But it, it really, I don't think it makes that much of a difference, depending on the quality of your power supply, of course. You know what I mean? Um, then, you know, this is a mod everyone should probably do. If your board has the 100 microfarad and the 68 ohm resistors, I'd recommend just swap them straight out to the 470s and the 75s. It's always good to upgrade the audio cap. Just get my cleaner audio. Uh, and to be honest, if you really want to spend the time, just replace it, all the capacitors. It does make a difference, as we saw with measuring those values before. Yeah, and then, of course, there was the pallet ram down here. So, you know, the sockets are a little bit fiddly. It's a little bit hard to desolder those chips, but persist and get yourself a desoldering gun. That's well worth the investment. It makes that job a lot easier. So they came out, swapped out, new chips, job's done. All right, guys, I'll leave the video there. I'll stop talking and I'll let you get on with your day. Thanks for watching.